Hey, and welcome to Stump Grown. We are joined this Sunday by Sam Mendoza. Sam Mendoza, take it away. Cause it's ten minutes to Daniels And it's ten minutes to Sean's Seventeen minutes to Christian's house And I know that soon it won't be long Three minutes to Dolly's And it's ten minutes to Chris Twenty-ish minutes to Juliet's house And I know that soon it won't be long Won't be long Won't be long Everything's bright in the suburbs But I can't wait to see the ones I love Daniel moved a bit closer Six minutes or so Twenty-ish minutes to George and Nick's house And I know that soon it won't be long Won't be long called Suburbs, that one's unreleased. This next one's called Comics. It's also unreleased. Oh, some new songs. So much, so much of that. <coughs> cool. Making comics with my Treats for you all later. Stump Grown exclusive as of right now. Yeah, pretty much. Cool. I can be the devil on your shoulder when you're weak. Making bad decisions in the night when you can't sleep. Life of a party. Yes. 
Excellent start. Um, so springy for this beautiful spring day. Thanks. Can I have you all go around and introduce yourselves and tell me what you're playing? Yeah, I'm Sam. I um, write songs and sing and play guitar. Amazing. My name is Patrick. I'll be doing some singing, but mostly playing drums today. Hell yeah. Hey, I'm Aiden. I'm doing no singing, only bass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Case. I'm playing lead guitar, and I also sing when we play live. Wonderful. Um, okay, I have a, a first question that I like to ask everyone, and so I will be asking all of you. Who is your first favorite musical artist? The person that you started to like and were like, maybe music is something I want to do. Um. <laughs> I know mine right away. Yeah, go oh, ahead. perfect. Ozzy Osbourne. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. He's still going strong. I yeah. Love that man. Do you feel, how do you feel that impacts your playing? Um, I guess I mostly looked to him as a vocalist and a songwriter, but I guess I was also a big fan of Black Sabbath growing up. So the drummers in that band were always really good. Um, but Ozzy was just like, you know, he was my first rock star. He yeah. Was the first guy that I was like, cool. No. He's cool. I want to be like him. Respect. Uh, do you feel that personality-wise, you're similar at all? Well, of the personal conversations with him, I've had. I'm not <laughs> sure. But he seems pretty chill and like kind of soft-spoken, despite how he sings. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of identify with that. Okay. Yeah. Heard. And anyone else come up with theirs in the meantime? <laughs> Got yours, Sam. I think so. Well, um, I remember hearing not okay. I don't know if this was, like, the full propulsion of, like, oh, yeah, music is, like, going to be the thing. But, like, I think, like, a first core memory of, like, really liking a song was not the No Doubt version. And I can't remember the original name of the artist, but the one who sings, like, it's my life. Da, da. Oh, it's The talk. The, I the, believe. No, I yes. Talk Talk. Or oh, talk, talk maybe. Talk Talk, right? Is it? The 80s loved to do that. Have those <laughs> double anyway, name bands. It was that original version of the song that I, like, it was the first time I remember, like, running the tape back like over and over I'm like let's go like on the, the, the play school um yes yeah. absolutely yeah. Well, that's a great like you can't help but feel energized yeah. by that song yeah um do you think anything hmm about that era of music or that kind of song impacts the songs you write today that's funny uh normally the 80s wouldn't be a huge influence I feel like in this current iteration of songs I'm working on and playing with this uh band here is um lot of like kind of like the the 60s also like 90s influence like power pop and that sort of stuff but can um, see that um mcgee just put out a really amazing record and that's a call to like a lot of 80s sounds and instruments and like um so i've actually had a big like phil collins moment the past couple <sighs> weeks so phil collins and someone actually right compared <laughs> someone actually compared me to him a while back and i was just like what <laughs> and now i'm kind of like holding it like a hug now uh -huh. like it feels it's become a compliment mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Case or Aiden, do you any come to mind? 
<laughs> Mine's similar to Sam, and I don't know when like the music propulsion started, but I definitely remember sitting in my car seat listening to Red Hot Chili Peppers. Like <laughs> other <laughs> side, <laughs> how long, how long? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I remember I was yeah, a toddler just fucking ripping in my seat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you, do you draw anything from the Red Hot Chili Peppers today? Probably not as much today, but definitely growing up, like Flea and his bass playing was always kind of cool and inspiring. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> yep. Sure. Well, my, my first favorite musical artist was Rise Against when I was like in middle school because mm. I was always like contrarian i guess for sure you know what i mean yeah like it's it was always like bad religion or no effects and i was like no it's rise against <laughs> and then that was like the first time i heard of a band that like did things outside of make music but also do like mm-hmm. animal rights stuff and like v- vegan advocacy yeah. and all that stuff at their shows and that was like i didn't know you could do that and then sam and i went to high school together so the idea of playing live was actually very close and in arm's reach to me because I saw Sam doing it and our friends Nick and George and I was like man if these guys are doing it I can probably do this right and now here we are so that was like it was like a combination of like music doesn't have to just be music and you can do it because your friends are doing it I say this a lot it shows too that it's like a special iteration too because like Case comes from the high school era Aiden comes from like my college young adult era and Patrick's like a new but dear friend as well so it's like people from different iterations that have wanted to play music with me and it's pretty cool yeah how long have you been playing together the four of you in this iteration coming up on a year yeah this configuration played our first show at uh the um the Pika lobby uh for uh friends Friends, friends of noise. noise, yeah. Friends yes. of noise put on the show, and mm-hmm. uh, we did a show in the lobby around like May or June last year. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And um, it seems to me you're working on a lot of new stuff. You just put out a new EP. You're playing some unreleased songs. Yeah. What What's that been like? Sam's a writing machine. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Can't keep up with him. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's been fun. Yeah. The the recent EP, my friend is here, is very like, you know very much on the like the adrian lenker nick drake kind of side of things that i like and enjoy and so that was like purely acoustic guitars voice and like maybe a few auxiliary instrument uh, auxiliary instruments um so that was like the most minimal i've ever gotten in a studio setting um and so i play those songs more solo or um in like a guitar ensemble configuration with some like other friends in the scene but uh it would be fun I, i i tell these folks here that i want to bring some of those songs and try them in a full band and i think that'll be something to look forward to but yeah um a lot of the songs we just played now were um uh, have been recorded in the studio and just need some mixing and takes time it takes time it does really does yeah absolutely great well uh what are we going to hear next uh this one's up in the morning this one has been released and Mm -hmm. um it's out in the world and there's a music video for it I'm up in the morning Come back to bed Let your sleepy head I'm up in the chilly break of dawn Come back to bed Let your sleepy head I'm Fight it, get up and go. Get this day started. I'm up in the morning. Can't help it, not anymore. Not anymore. Dark is blue. Fight it, to get up and go, to 
get this day started I know that it's tempting Can't help it Not anymore Not anymore That's up in the morning, that one's out. And now we got Let Me Speak, which isn't out. So many juicy ones.
incredible. Um, Sam, you've been writing music for a long time. Do you have a pretty, a pretty settled routine process? Or is it different? Um, as of the past few months, I feel like it's shifted. It, it's more just been a dry spell recently. But um, I it think happens. my process for a couple of years now has been one of like like speed writing and kind of like treating songwriting as like this sort of pseudo performance slash um, like just like treating it more as an exercise than this like thing where the inspiration needs to strike. Um, mm, okay, so yeah. um, up in the morning and one of the songs that we'll play later, which is Speedrunner, uh, those came about and it was like pandemic time, you know, no performance. So I would like go live on Instagram. The only parameter I wanted to set for myself was just see what comes out in an hour. And those two songs mm. were strong enough skeletons, I think, to return to. And uh, yeah, it's a fun thing to come back to from time to time. It's not the end all be all for what songs become recorded or live sure. or, you know, whatever. But it's um, it's uh, ramped up a lot of things that I've wanted to ramp up for a long time and um, <laughs> helped me like come into like, I think like a solo identity a little bit more so. Cause I, I love writing collaboratively and I love writing in bands, but I think for me to kind of like forge a little more um, for like a solo sound, so to speak. Yeah. Understood. That process has made more sense for sure. Okay. Yeah. And then once you've got that, that skeleton there um, and you decide if it's going to be a solo or, or a band kind of song, how do you bring it to, the rest of the folks um i've become a little bit of a control freak okay. of, of, over the years um just Respect. like lear learning drums learning like just enough for like the demo and i think it's, it's just becoming more enthused with like recording and, and aiden and i have been roommates for a long time and we uh have a a fun like rehearsal studio space built into the house oh, lovely and so um with that has come like you know everything from putting mics on a kit to like just let's tap out a keyboard part on the drums like on Ableton or whatever uh -huh. logic whatever is kind of at our disposal so um yeah just being able to like um fashion the song but then like hearing everyone's like voices and personalities like I, I think the songs are all the better for everybody's skills that they bring to the table and it's, it's fun so it's like it's a it's a way certain way in the recording and in just all the visions that I have but then when it comes to live and stuff like this it's like it's cool because it breathes new life of its own so yeah um, you've said that you grew up around a lot of different multicultural musics, and I'm curious how that impacts the the sounds that you reach for or the tones, if you feel it does. Yeah, um, I think um, just being I exposed to a lot of cool stuff at an early age, like just um, in terms of like like Latin American music, like my dad was playing in salsa bands, I think. Uh, being able to, like, like, singing in Spanish from, like, an early age and, like, just being introduced to, like, saxophone and, like, band music and then eventually high school was, like, jazz band and then in high school with, you know, Case and I were going to shows for the first time. So, yeah, um, being, you know, and, and then all through that, you know, learning what I liked but also just continuing to have phases of life where it's, like, I'm a little more sponge-like um, mm -hmm. and can absorb those influences. I think... Right now, it feels like the most of, like, a fixed sound as it has been in the past. But, like, this band that I had in high school, in case remembers, Cactus, it was just, like, all over the place. It was, like, very, like, primacy at its core. Like, just kind of, a, <laughs> like, a big fuck you kind of to, like, everything else that was happening in the scene. But it was, like, um, it was just fun. And it was a good way to, like, learn how to be in a band and learn how to just kind of do the thing at all. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. And and then you've been working on this solo project. You put out your first single in, in 2018. How do you feel it's it's evolved over the years? Um, I would say um, it's like kind of like that. Oh, that's funny. Was that Better Days? I'm trying to even remember what song <laughs> that was even. Uh, yeah. Um, look, and that was uh, with a friend. Uh, Stefan, who's a, a wonderful songwriter and engineer, he puts out music of his own, and um, we became roommates at the time. And so then, um, him having his like home studio set up inspired me to want to like write more songs, bring songs to him. So that was a very um, collaborative effort with him at first, and then we did my first album, Maintenance, together. Um, yeah, and I think uh, that one at that point for the initial like laying down of songs and like recordings, um, that I was like more oh, this friend would be great for the bass parts. And oh, so sure. we were doing more of like, because when Aiden and I were, were active in a band called uh, Spiller, like we would do a lot of that where we would lay the initial 
foundation of the song, you know, like guitar, drums, bass, like do, do like the live recording thing. So okay. I was still in that headspace at the time um, for maintenance. And then everything since has been like, no, let's like individually track things and let's like, you know, put it to the click, you know, like all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, make it a little more so. precise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then and a last question here, but you said you feel like you are finding your own unique sound or, or something that feels more true to your identity. How would you describe your sound? now um <laughs> you can use whatever like verbiage you want it doesn't need to be a genre name power pop's been been a fun descriptor i think and I, I think it fits the sound well for what it is now um but i think it, it just feels like reflective of the journey of like having and, and patrick can relate to this too probably a little bit but just being like a couple years out of like music school and like Whoa, fuck yeah, capos are fun again. <laughs> like, why did I ever deny myself that yeah. pleasure? Just and, like, a couple of chords is fine. Yeah. I think, like, return to simplicity and just, like, making music that, like, makes me happy and, like, is, is fun to play, mm. I think, more so than, like, this, like, hyper-intellectualized sort of thing, um, which, you know, is, is fun in its own way, but I, I think that's just not where I'm at in my life right yeah. now. Time and I kind of just want to make... Yeah. So. Absolutely. Great. All right, well, we'll listen to a few more. What are we going to hear next? This song is called Speed Runner. I know you see right through every crack in the sidewalk. I know it's just a game. But it's a labor of my love I see you rush right through Rush right through And there is nothing I can do about it Do one more for y'all. Uh, this last one's called Life Boat. And the crowd goes wild. And the crowd. This the is crowd the crowd goes favorite. Bonkers bananas. <laughs> this 
Stop copying me, Case. <laughs> I've been doing it since high school. It's all I've ever wanted to do. Hey. Every day I look in the mirror and I say, why am I not Sam? <laughs> well, thank you so much to, uh, to Caroline and Max and Noah and Lonnie, was it? And I don't think I met Maggie. Maggie. Thank you so much to all of you. Um, I look forward to seeing this on the big screen. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in today. We always appreciate you making time. And uh, it's been a delight and an honor to host you and to hear so many unreleased songs, too. Always a special surprise. Before we bid farewell, what's next for you? Um, hopefully more stuff like this. Hopefully <laughs> um, some records out. Um, uh, we got a show, let's see. April 14th, we'll be at White Eagle with uh, Dadweed and Ben Dre the Giant. We will be, um, I think, gigless in May. June 27th, we will be at Show Bar with Katie and the Null Sets and New Here. And then a little farther out, August 20th, um, we'll be co-headlining the Mississippi Studios with Bori. Oh, wonderful. Advanced God planning. Like, yeah. That's nice. Well, we'll look forward to all those shows and to new records. And thank you again for joining us. Thanks again, Caroline. Yeah, thank it was great so to much. have you. 
Stump Grown is recorded and produced at DB Nations by Noah Penwell with sound engineering from Max Simon. Alon Eck is our photographer. This episode was filmed by Maggie Zelensky. I'm your host, Caroline Drew, and we're honored to have you with us. We'll see you next time.